We are live. Hi. Test number two. <laughs> this is challenging. So the first time it didn't go well because YouTube put me on a, the wrong channel, one of our other channels. But we are live. This is Maki Vlog. Nobody's watching, but hopefully somebody will join. Basically, it's a blizzard. We don't really want to take the car out in it. Uh, it did blizzard. Uh, if we open the garage door behind us, you'd probably be able to see it, but there's a whole ton of snow. So instead, we're just going to sit in the car in the garage and we're dreaming about maybe doing a live stream in the future. So we're like, oh, let's just go test it out now yeah. when we have Wi Fi and see how this works. So, not super well, I'll tell you this, because Patrick is currently holding a Chromebook, which yeah. seems we had a good. we had other plans um, to have a uh, webcam set up so that it'd be better video quality and we have like a light so we thought you'd be able to see the back area but webcam's not working the light is not bright enough to show back the back seat area but anyways uh, we're just testing this out um, we may go on a road trip mini or long this weekend and if so we want to be able to do this for real yeah um, preferably not with me holding a Chromebook <laughs> while I'm driving. How talented are you? Um, but if we get this working, we'll do it from our phone or from the Chromebook and with the webcam and have better quality. Right now, um, as Liv said at the beginning, we had uh, about two feet of snow um, over the past 24, 36 hours. Uh, the airport's just now reopening at, in Denver. We're in Denver in case you didn't know that. Um it's <laughs> sorry your hands steady <laughs> i have to work on that but uh we we were gonna uh take the maki out and drive in the snow but um it's a little bit too deep um they're trying to keep everybody off the roads it's getting a lot better quickly but um even just to open a garage door there's uh two two and a half feet of snow piled up against the garage door and if we open it up it may not close correctly and then it gets to be a pain and you got to shovel all of that. And um, so anyways, didn't want to bother with that just to do a live video test, but uh, we figured we could also answer any questions. I know that uh, every time we post a video, we get a bunch of questions. Um, I want to say hi quickly to Prague, Prague star. Star, yeah. Prague Star in Illinois. That's actually where when I first moved to this country, we moved to Illinois and we got like six feet of snow. <laughs> so you're probably like, whatever, this is totally fine. You could drive your car in this. So hey. <laughs> and you gotta he oh, they just nice. gotta grab yeah. a few. And yeah. hey Brian. <laughs> this is very cool. Like we've we haven't really done um any live streams, of course, for this channel. And of course we have other channels, but they, they have like 30 viewers <laughs> uh, total. So um, this yeah, is a cool experiment. Um, we've seen other people were inspired by like Kyle, Kyle Connor yeah, from Out of Spec. So fun. He did like a two and a half hour live stream while he was driving. We totally asked questions. The whole um, time. If this is successful, we could do some of the live streams some like again. that. Um, <laughs> we'll have to, you know, buy a bigger data plan if we're going to do that. Uh, but I think it'd be cool. It'd yeah. pass the time while we're driving for sure. Yeah. I I do think it'd be cool to actually test out how we would probably do this, maybe with a phone or something. Yeah. Um, hey, from the Netherlands, <laughs> two feet of snow. Yeah, I agree. It's totally time to, time to stay home, yeah. which is why we're in the garage. So, <laughs> and luckily, like we are both, um, we've been working from home for one year now. Just uh, yeah. Friday was our one year anniversary of working from home due to the coronavirus so we don't have a reason to go out and that's sort of like one of those things of like um you know it, it, it's there's no reason to really get out i i wanted to take the maki out yesterday just to film like the traction and handling in the snow but um by the time <laughs> that got you know by the time i got around to doing that it was uh the blizzard warning popped up and we had a lot of wind and snow and it was coming down at about two inches per hour so i feel I, like we canceled those plans yeah i feel like the fast lane you guys probably know them or uh, bjorn as well yeah. are good cold weather people so maybe we'll leave that to those guys yeah. i'm originally from south africa pride to star gosh i hope i'm saying that right um and yeah, we could use our phones with unlimited data plans. Yeah. Like it does choke, doesn't the, it? Yeah, all the unlimited data plans, even for phones, they will start throttling you at, uh, depends. Some are 20 gigs, some are at 50 gigs. They'll throttle you to a slower plan. 
Um, so that's that's one of the things that we'll probably do. But we both work from home. And although we have great Internet, like uh, there was one day last week where we had an Internet outage. So Liv was working. Well, I was avoiding work, but Liv was working <laughs> off of our unlimited data plan. And, and the work that she does is uh, lots of data. I'm yeah, so huge <laughs> amounts of data transfer. So we were like, we, we might need to keep that as an insurance plan. But we we also have um, the option of using Google Fi. So that would work. Um, and, and just getting a mobile, mobile. Uh, hotspot as well. So there's there's a lot of options out there. Um, of course, we're in Colorado, so we'll have to see who has good coverage going into the yeah. mountains um, on I-70. <laughs> I've gotten that before. New Jersey. New Jersey. Can I get a glass of water? <laughs> <laughs> water. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, actually, Nathan, uh, we have a vlog coming out shortly that shows some of the issues that we had. So yeah. I've had a, a couple of <laughs> charging Jonathan? issues. Um, I've only did EA fast charging once, and that was a problem. Um, <laughs> we had multiple failures, and that'll be in one of our next videos. Uh, we were driving all around Denver and then charged at the end of the day. So we'll have the details on all of that. And um, if if we needed to actually charge, I would have been extremely frustrated, oh, but yeah. we, we were like 20 miles from home. So we just decided to come home. Um, the other issue I had is at home, I have a charge point home flex and I'm going to do a video about that as well. And um, the first night that I actually got it working, cause I actually had some electrical issues I had to get through first, but the first night that I had it working, it worked fine. And then the next day it, it just lost like Ford pass lost all of my charging locations and my charging schedule. Um, and the way I resolve that, and I probably should do something on this, uh, post, but I deleted everything that I could from Ford pass as far as charging settings. And then I plugged in the 110 charger, got it to recognize the 110 charger, and then therefore the home location and then reset up my schedule and everything seems to be working well since then. So, yeah, you should definitely document that. That's so fiddly. That's annoying. Yeah, and and part of it is is like um, I'm new to EVs, so I don't necessarily want to say too much until I know that it isn't user error because mm. I don't want somebody you know like to post and go like this is just working incorrectly, and then somebody's like oh, you're supposed to do B instead of A or whatever. Because like when we had the test car, um, I kept trying to get the the charging station. It was a, I think it was a charge point, um, no EV go, it was an EV go station. And I was trying to get it to recognize my payment. And then I finally, you know, read what was on the station and it was like, plug it in first and then initiate <laughs> payment. I'm like, uh, de I'm details that from memory. Apparently, <laughs> um, that with the test car, we charged twice and both of those sessions were pretty seamless other than the user error. Um, and those were at a uh, hundred kilowatt station. Or 80 kilowatt. I can't remember. It was 80. 80 kilowatt station. Yeah. And, we, and we got right up to 77. In the morning, it was only 44 kilowatts. Um, but it was really cold. Frosty. It was 13 degrees, which is something negative Celsius. Minus 30 divided by 2. I can't remember. So the, the charge point home flex I got is plug-in. And it is a NEMA 1450. So it's the same type that the the mobile, the Ford mobile charger uses. And at, when I first got it set up, neither one was working. And I found out it was something with my electrical panel. The electrician came back out and helped me resolve that. Um, and then like when I was having the Ford pass issues, neither the, the, the Ford supply charger or the uh, charge point home flex was being recognized i'm just by... gonna go rescue the dog who the is... the dog is in the garage with us um he's <laughs> a border collie corgi so he sort of likes to be near us um all the time but he is upset that we're sitting in the car and now he wants to go back in the, the house and, <laughs> um so anyways uh let's see is your charge point hardware plugged in so yeah start asked about your favorite features so, okay. So anyways, we, um, I'll do a video on the charge point. I really like it so far. Uh, haven't been doing a ton of charging because we've stayed home with this, the snowstorm, but it, uh, it's actually really nice. The app, you can, uh, tell it like what system you're using for your energy source. So we're using, uh, 
or what plan. So we're using Excel Energy here in Colorado, and then it calculates the cost of the charge based on how long it's been charged in. And, and the app shows me like how many kilowatt hours are being delivered to the car and keeps track of all of that. And also on the website. So it has like a nice feature where I can export um, all of that data. So I think it's really cool. Um, so I get, Liv said somebody asked, what was our favorite favorite feature so far of the car? Really, I think one of the things that uh, I've really liked and was a bit surprising to me, um, like I knew the car was gonna be fast and I knew it was going to be quiet, but it is really extraordinary, like how quick the car is zipping around in traffic and driving around um, and combining that with how quiet it is. So, um, and I'm sure you've all experienced this. If you had gas cars, like you, you know, you want to uh, accelerate quickly at a stoplight and your car is loud and noisy and, you, you know, the high RPM. And it's not that big of a deal, but it's like everybody knows you're trying to, like, race from the start, you know, if you need to get over and change lanes quickly to make a turn or something like that. With the Mach-E, it's just like you – it's just like just quiet. You just jump forward and, and it's all good. And uh, that's been really cool. And it's it's almost – it's uh, – there's a couple of times that I'll confess to. Uh, the, the one time it was – I ended up doing 75 and the 35 <laughs> – accidentally um because you just zip along and you don't really know how fast you're going um wait don't we have to say something legally like allegedly allegedly you allegedly yeah yeah there may have been a friend that did 75 into 35 right. and, and the uh the one time i was sort of like oh let me zip around this or a friend was going to zip around a car on the freeway and was like, oh, it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit sluggish. And I was like, oh, that's because I'm doing 95, you know, already. So <laughs> the friend said, but yeah, <laughs> it is unfortunate that Ford Pass is required. So one, one of the things I did learn when my, with my charging issues at home with the car was that um, you can't control a lot of it with sync. And, and Ford said that, but it was neat to, um, to actually like delete everything out of Ford Pass and then just go set it up as I was sitting here in the car. Um, and that, that helped a lot with that. Um, and then of course, you know, we'll test out some of the charging on the road this weekend with uh, EA, but I've also heard that Ford Pass can be an issue. Um, that was weird. So we're, we're oh, sitting in the, the car. car? Um, and, and I turned it on for 15 minutes so that the, the seats would be nice and warm for us. And, uh, of course it's doing like things, um, <laughs> if you don't have a mach -E and you, or if you haven't had an EV yet, when you have them plugged in and like plug them in or unplug them, like it does things like, <laughs> well, it reminds me cause we, when we had the test car, we went to the Centennial airport in Denver, which is a smaller airport. And remember we parked and we were quietly listening to the planes and then suddenly the car started doing things. Yeah. It's opening vents. It's like stuff. valves and vents, yeah. and uh, you can hear the coolant shifting and stuff like that occasionally. Thank you, Stephanie. But it, it's really weird. Um. So Mark is asking if anyone else is having issues with phone as a key, and we've mostly been carrying the key fob, so we have yeah. to do some proper testing. So it's I know people are having with uh, phone as a key uh, issues. So I've been just carrying the key fob, and then like the other day, I just had my phone with me came out to the garage, sat in the car and was fiddling around with stuff. And then I noticed that it popped up that key was not detected. And before and I actually got my phone out, cause I was going to take a picture of it uh, to document it or video. And by the time I got the phone ready, um, it then recognized the phone was there as a key. So I think it is glitchy. It's connects using the uh, low power Bluetooth. And uh, I, I think that technology can just be tricky and different phones function differently. So I have a feeling it's going to be a hard one for anybody to nail down and hopefully Ford listens and starts including a second key fob. Um, Cause I don't know if, I don't know how well the phone as a key will work. I think we need to practice using the codes to get in and start and all that. Yeah. I think that's one of the things I would, I do want to, test out and maybe do a video on just like, okay, we're going to go for a drive and we're going to leave our phone at home. We're going to leave. Yeah, right. Though. It'll be like, or put, Facebook, our, put our phone Mikey in, in uh, airplane mode, uh, there you go. completely cut it off from the car, leave the key fob and just rely on the, the keypad or the keypad yeah. and see how well that works. Um, 
And yeah, the, the $7,500 uh, credit is off your taxes uh, for this year. So like next year in 2022, when we file our taxes, uh, we'll be able to uh, claim a $7,500 tax credit at the federal level. And um, it's up to $7,500. Um, if you don't have $7,500 in tax liability, then you don't, you, you don't get extra back. So like if you had $7,000 in tax liability, they don't send you a check for 500. Um, but just remember, like when we're talking about liability, it, it includes the money that you've paid, um, through your employer or other, you know, ways. Uh, a lot of people think, well, I get money back every year, so they won't give me more back. But yeah, you, it's, it's the whole tax bill, um, which you've paid, you usually pay most of that through your employer anyways. Mm. Um, and it doesn't roll over. And some States like Colorado, we have an additional $2,500 that we file with Colorado as well. And it's not just if you itemize, right? Um, you may have to itemize. Let's see. Yeah. It, I mean, with all this, it's better to ask your tax preparer. I will, um, I'm getting ready to do my taxes for this year and I usually use TurboTax. So I'm going to go through the process of saying I have it because I want to see what it will look mm -hmm. like. And then I'll just go back and delete that out. So I'll, I'll let you know what it looks like when you do TurboTax and are trying to claim the $7,500 credit. Oh, and Jonathan says itemization is for deductions. This is a credit. Interesting. I think that's probably a good yeah. idea to test it out on TurboTax. Yeah. And I mean, see. taxes are always complicated, so I don't want to necessarily give anybody um too much advice, yeah. but uh, I, I I think that's how it works, and I'll try to find more information and include all of that. But I I I mean, it's a pretty great program, and hmm. uh, I know that we're going to benefit. Uh, some people that are like retirees, um, they run into issues because they don't have they're not paying the taxes on their income, I believe. So it's just uh, and a lot of their retirement income is non taxable, so then they don't they can't utilize the seventy five hundred dollar credit. Um, so there's there's complications like that where it's definitely better to go ahead and check with a uh, a tax attorney. Hmm. I hope that it also pays off in the long run that when we sell these used, then it, you can sort of keep the price down, so used EVs become more accessible to the next market. Well, that's one of the reasons why I think. Uh. Um, I see. I don't know enough to get at me. So a uh, couple of things. Um, one of the reasons why the residuals are so low or are low on like the Ford options program when you get the Mach-E is because it's sort of factored in that you got the $7,500 tax credit, but who you sell it to is not going to get any tax credit. So it's sort of factored in that way. There is some talk about doing a tax credit for used EVs at the federal level, which would be really cool. Um, and then, uh, so the other thing is, is like, Almost every state, there are a couple of states in the U.S. that do not do not allow Ford options. But for a lot of people, Ford options is like your uh, red carpet lease that normally you would do through Ford, except that the difference is, is um, you technically own the vehicle. It's technically like a balloon payment over like three or four year period. At the end of that four year period, you have a residual value that you are able to buy the car at. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can just turn it back in or you could sell it and pay off um, whatever the residual value is or the balloon payment is. So, um, and with the Ford options, you get to use the tax credit with the the lease. It's um, it's different and complicated. And, and from what everybody that I've seen is pretty much determined that the red carpet lease is not a great deal on the Mach-E because of that. That sucks. And yeah, I was looking up that form, the qualified plug-in electric drive motor vehicle credit form. Yeah, I would just go there and check that out. Yeah, that's um, useful. Thanks, JG. So, Steve, this vlog, we're just uh, chatting. Like, we were going to do a weekend drive and do a live stream from the car this time. And we're actually in a Maki. I was just noticing, like, we could be in a darkened room oh, or wait. something. You can't tell that we're in a Maki no, right no, now. That doesn't help. Not at all. <laughs> Put like, the ring light behind us and you can see. We'll take a tour of the car. <laughs> oh, yeah. So one of the reasons we sort of wanted to pop in, I'm totally blinding you guys, yeah. is we put on the matte screen protector and someone theoretically might have used too much soap. So 
by someone, I mean me, of course. So <laughs> we came to check if some of the streaking that was left behind from the soap was still there. Uh, if you guys are going to use this matte screen protector, which seems pretty awesome, it's one drop of soap to eight ounces of water. <laughs> it's a good mixture, apparently. I went a bit liberal. So it seems to be looking pretty nice, though. We're going to give it a couple more days. Yeah. Um, oh, something. I don't even know if you can see this, but I was curious. Okay, there. When everyone's talked about a really messy, filled with masks. Um, cubby but where you program a new key fob so I, I know many people have come up with inventive things to store there like someone said sweetener packets i've never even looked at that really but yeah i know it fits the key fob but that's all yeah. that's in the center yeah. console yeah it's actually really deep so we have uh we always have coffee with this i think yeah and we have uh like 24 ounce contigos or 20 ounce 20 ounce contigos I yeah think. i don't know but Very they funny. actually both fit in there sitting full upright. So like we, when we switched to soda midday, those went into cup holders and those, that shows you how deep this thing is it in the is. middle. It's really cool. And as a side note, uh, I'm five, five Patrick's five, six. It's about three forty, Steve, by the way, in the afternoon for us, we're on our lunch breaks, but I know someone mentioned that this middle thing here was a little low. So I think for our height, it's pretty good. But if you are taller, perhaps, or need a higher seat, there's like a an elbow rest thing that people can get. Did you see that? Yeah. To raise your arms up. So a couple of things. Uh, the the OCD plug. Uh huh. Dot oh. com is where we got the the screen protector. Yeah. They have one for the this screen as well, which I'm not worried about that getting fingerprints, but I might do that one. The uh, driver screen just so that it'll, it'll match the matte finish. But I, I so far I like it and. We have some photos of how many fingerprints are on there. It was pretty crazy. Um, and I think I think Jonathan's right about the key fob. It's like we can't program our own. No. But like if your key fob is running low on battery, that's where you can put it so that it'll recognize. Oh, key. is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, I thought it's what, what they used to reprogram them or to program if you get another one, right? I don't know. And... We'll have to look. Yeah, but I know that like if firm. like if it's not detecting the key on the key fob, you can put it there and then that's that's the point to where it's next to the sensor. So then Useful. you can you can start and drive the car with it there. So I have a I have a polarizing question here. Uh start button or no start button? What do you guys think? I kind of like it. Uh personally, it's yeah. just can you see it? Probably hard to tell. Okay. <laughs> there we go. I kind of like having a start button, but some people don't. And if and if you don't know, I guess like people that are coming from Tesla and some other um, EVs, you uh, basically you get in, and when you get in and put your foot on the brake, the car is is ready to go. So if you take it out of gear, it's ready to go. And I and I get the yeah, logic behind too. that, um, but I, I I don't know. I'm old school, I guess. I like the I like the start button because like right now I can hit the start button. Um, and we could sit in here in the car and we know it's like in full accessory mode and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, I don't know. Minor, minor detail. Oh, wow. Uh, by the way, I love that name, Countess Crazy. Which one are you getting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, peachy too. I, I spoke to Kyle Connor on, was it Friday? No, it's Thursday. Um, he was actually driving back from California. Uh, he took a grabber blue Mustang Maki, the twin to this one to California. And on his way there, uh, he said pretty much every single station plug and charge failed on the way back. He used the EA app and every single station, it worked with no problems. It still has like a weird charging curve, but he was able to literally just use the EA app and charge without issues. So there, there is something going on with plug and charge, um, the good news is, is like, that's a software thing. So whether it's EA or Ford, they can fix that. Hmm. Premium extended battery. Oh, oh, very nice. That was what we originally ordered, wasn't it? Yeah, that was yeah. our, so we actually have, <laughs> <laughs> when we reserved the mach -E, we saw it at the LA oh, Auto nice. Show and we were going to go with a red select because I wasn't sure if I, you know, what situation I would be in and what I was going to order. 
Um, as it came time to order the Maki, I'm like, I definitely want the premium. I love the car. Um, and I want the all-wheel drive and I want the extended range. So we switched to a red premium. And then in August, uh, they did a mock drop promotion. And I got into that um, and was able to switch and get the Grabber Blue, which is like we both really love the Grabber Blue. Some of the other little details about the first edition, it's like not that big of a deal to us. But the Grabber Blue is definitely a big deal. It has like the red brake uh caliper uh, i i'm weird though i think that looks odd to be totally honest like like they left something on it i don't know what you guys think yeah but and so f one of the questions is ford pass give you the ea member rate um from what i understand right now no and that has been brought up to ford of like we're supposed to have the ford pass network that should get us the ea discounted rate apparently it's not once you get out of the free 250 kilowatt hours um, so Ford has been made aware of that. I think they'll probably address that. I would imagine that it's just a matter of like figuring that out. Um, and then um, once that's done, it's it's all good. But you can use the EA with your own account, but that does cost $4 per month. So we'll, we'll see. Hopefully that's just a quick little thing that EA and Ford can work out. Yeah. Hey, James. So there isn't any differences there between using L and one pedal. I don't know. We have like people talk about the L is just some is basically like one pedal, but um, Ford doesn't really tell you like mm -hmm. they just say one pedal on and off and they don't really tell you how much and stuff like that. So uh, you just sort of have to go by feel to see if there's any difference. Um, so we'll, we'll do some of that. And then the other question is, is does the, Oh, interesting. I never played with this. So the, it's the knob for the gear shift. Oh, I need that back on. Hold, yep. please. Dude, dude. So the gear shift knob, somebody asked, does it spin past the park or the drive if you are changing gears? It does. But what's interesting, I didn't notice this until right now, but like the car is off, so I can't spin it. So uh. it's interesting. But like while it's uh, while it's on, if I spin past or hit drive, it of course, it won't go any further in the indicator, but I can still spin the knob. So that's interesting. Yes, you don't accidentally switch greetings. Ooh, a Mach E as a oh. police cruiser. That's oh, not that fair. Is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think they're just so responsive. It's it's yeah. a good car to have to jump to attention, I would think. EVs in general. Yeah. I'm assuming. We're we're gonna start test driving a couple EVs. We're test driving a Polestar 2 on Friday. On Friday. Oh my God, that's this week. That's right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we'll start test driving some other EVs because we pretty much just driven this and the Tesla Model Y. Speaking of which... Um, the GT, from what I understand, is that they're going to take orders starting in April and they are still expecting to get some out this summer. But then, of course, you know, the 2022 models will start in the fall. So mm. I don't know how many GTs will actually make it out this year, but... Um, I imagine that there's a lot of GT enthusiasts that are um, dying to get a 2021 GT and will be disappointed if they get bumped over. Some people might want to wait um, because I'm sure there's going to be some minor changes to the Mach-E. Uh, somebody asked me today uh, in a message and was asking what changes that I think that they would make for the 2022 Mach-E. And I don't I don't know. I have a feeling that it may be minor. It may just be some additional colors and maybe change the wheels or something like that. Um, I don't know if they're going to make a lot of major changes cosmetically or mechanically. A lot of people think they should add a heat pump. Oh, um, yeah. My my gut feeling is that heat pumps, uh, I don't think Ford is sold on heat pump as being the, um, the end-all be-all solution to range in cold weather. Um, you know, I don't work for Ford. I don't know, uh, any of the Ford engineers, but, um, I just sort of get the feeling that like, uh, if you add a heat pump, you're adding complexity and you have to have a system that can do electric heat as well as a heat pump. So you're adding a complexity to a system that is all, and, and the heat pump is only beneficial at certain temperatures. Um, and personally, I don't think we, I don't think we're going to care. So, well, I know, and like we're terrible people to judge us because, like, right now we're sitting in a very cold garage 
with the car turned off and it's actually kind of chilly, but I think we're both fine. So we're kind of that cold blooded thing. Do you put the car in neutral to go in? Uh, in the in, in the manual and on MachiVlog.com, if you go into like resources, I have I have like the uh, a link to the online manual, and they actually have instructions for how to go through a car wash in the Machi. Um, I didn't look at it because I hopefully will never have to take it through a car wash. I want to <laughs> paranoid with the paint job. <laughs> so yeah, we're we we uh, this is by far the nicest car we've we've owned. Yeah. So we want to take real good care of it and hopefully avoid car washes unless we get some really good uh, paint protection film on it. Yeah. Which, okay. Would you guys theoretically be interested in seeing someone DIY paint protection film application on a Maki? Cause we're like curious. It seems very challenging. Uh, so we're curious to try it out and it's such an expensive procedure and it's, and it's very challenging and, and naturally should be expensive. So would you guys be interested in that? And what's that? Somebody likes the Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6. They both look nice. <laughs> yeah, and they I both have the some Kias, good specs too. Do they? I haven't even looked well, at the Kia specs, but it looks really pretty. Very fast charging. And uh, it's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's interesting because uh, VW ID4 is basically coming out. Um, Polestar 2, which isn't really uh, SUV-ish. It's more coupe or sedan. Mm. Um, Model Y. There's a lot of choices. And uh, one of the things that I want to do is like, I, I love the Mach-E. I, um, I, you know, I wouldn't trade it for any of these others. Uh, very much enjoying it. No, no buyer's remorse or anything like that. But, you know, um, if you look at ice cars, there's, like a hundred similar, similar, similar. There's a hundred similar SUVs out there. And yeah. you know what? It's like, you know, this is why there's different SUVs in gas cars and there's different colors and different wheels and different trim. And the same thing's going to apply to EVs is like, there's going to be 30 different EV SUVs in the next few years. And that's great. And if you like one because it has a knob on the screen, you like it because it has a knob on the screen, go buy that. You know, if you think the knob on the Maki -E is stupid, mm -hmm. don't buy it, go buy something else. There's going to be so many choices and so many options. And really it's going to be like, uh, you know, I think they're all going to have pretty darn good tech um, and great batteries. Um, and as much as we talk about efficiency and range, they're all going to be fairly close. They're going to, you know, You'll, you'll have over 250 miles of range. Um, so it's sort of like buy, buy what works for you. And I was just laughing because I did put a uh, reservation down for an Aptera. <laughs> <laughs> just because, I mean, well, I think we did the 600 mile range. Because like eventually when we replace my car, if any of you have seen what my car looks like, it's not the most practical thing. So that yeah, I mean, range. They're gonna be so many options coming up. You will. I mean, we'll barely have to worry about charging, but you will still. Yeah. But, well, and that's yeah. the other thing is, is and and one of the reasons why I wasn't um, like I put down my my reservation on the Mach E, but I still was 100 percent sold. It wasn't because of the Mach E. It's because I wasn't sure about the EV world and specifically the fact that everybody's like, well, if you're if you're gonna buy EV, you got to buy Tesla because of the the charging network. And then I did my own research. And one of the things I have is um, with Google, you can look at your travel history in Google Maps by day. So I knew already in my mind of like what days um, that I probably did the most driving. There was one one time when uh, we had to go to work and then we had to come back home. And then we went down to Colorado Springs for a concert and then drove back. And even on that day, I think I ended up at about 175 miles that I drove in one day. So the only time I'm going to probably fast charge um, is on a road trip. Yeah. And the last time I did a big road trip, we rented a minivan because we had so much gear because we were taking bikes and stuff with us. So, um, yes, we're going to take the Mach-E on road trips just because it's a fun car to do that. But realistically, it was like that got rid of all of my concerns and trying to remind myself um, – when you own an EV, for most people, 95% of their charging is going to be at home. And you don't give a crap if it's going to take, um, 
you know, four hours or eight hours because you're going to plug in at 11 o'clock at night and then leave at seven o'clock in the morning. And do you really care how long it takes to charge, you know? So now granted, we are fortunate to have a garage and we're sort of looking into maybe trying to influence we're in a townhome complex. So there are townhomes that don't have garages. So we're, we're looking into the potential of trying to help them get uh, charge points or charging stations installed in the parking lots out here because that's obviously a huge impediment for people and uh, such a reliance on outside charging sources so like jg says it has to be improved um i haven't tried homelink yet i know that a lot of people have had issues getting it to work even in regular cars and whatnot i should try that now since we're just sitting at home in the garage um and if you don't know what homelink is it's basically having the uh, automatic garage door opener. There's three buttons on the visor to um, that you can program into different, uh, you know, garage doors and uh, gates. So uh, just haven't haven't given that a try yet. So just there's a lot of open the garage right now. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that we want to try out. Um, and then and part of it is is like I don't want to just do everything off camera. I want I want everybody else to feel my pain learning all of this stuff. <laughs> And speaking of which, we did document the screen application, so we'll be sharing that. Uh, I'd, I'd say it was relatively painless. Yeah. We put a, a matte screen protector on the giant screen over here in the middle in case anyone missed that. But um, Jab Chat, we're definitely planning to go to Vegas probably once we're vaccinated uh, yeah. because Meow Wolf is there. Yeah. If you don't know, there's a Meow Wolf Vegas, and... I mean, that would be an amazing road trip. And we already know it'll take us about 14 and a half hours yeah. with charging. I think so. Yeah. And if you don't know Meow Wolf, um, you should Google it. Yeah. And uh, there's one in Santa Fe. That might be one of our first trips as well is to Santa Fe. And I don't know if we'll go into Meow Wolf. We definitely won't go into Meow Wolf until we're vaccinated. Yeah. Just, <laughs> that's just us. Um, it just opened back up. But um, we need to be extra cautious. So that's something that we won't do yet. But Meow Wolf is awesome. It's one of our favorite places in the world. Um, and they're, they just opened one in Las Vegas. And the one here in Denver, which was in our... Oh, that's in the next video coming up. You'll see in the oh, next yeah. <laughs> video that we're getting ready to release, or one of the next videos, Meow Wolf Denver, which is uh, huge and interesting. Um, coming soon. We coming don't really soon. know what's going to be in it, but we're trying to avoid... Does anyone know about Meow Wolf or do we sound like we're throwing words together? Yeah. It, <laughs> and it's actually interesting because the way they came up with the name Meow Wolf is they literally put uh, words, words in a hat and pulled out uh, two words at a time to create the name Meow Wolf. But it's it's an art collective. We'll just leave it at that. And yeah. it's uh, immersive, interactive art. Yeah. It's amazing. James was just mentioning um, telling his Siri to open the garage door. We were actually talking just before we came out here about testing with Alexa, Google, and an iPhone because now Patrick has one through work. So testing out all the controls inside the house and seeing what we can tell it to do within the car, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I, Homelink uh... – yeah, I, I don't think, know. yeah, I, no, he's just saying Homelink shouldn't be. Uh, I, and to be honest, um, I just upgraded our garage door opener because our old one didn't have Homelink. It was that <laughs> old. But I'm I'm of the, the type of like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But um, we did upgrade. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> okay, so for the the G word, I say schmoogle. Instead, when I'm when we're recording, I say schmoogle. So schmalexa, does that, did it do it? <laughs> schmalexa. And Shmuri. So we we learned we we learned that lesson ourselves because we were testing out the um, the Schmoogle stuff, and I was <laughs> playing it on the TV before we released the video, and then uh, the video triggered my Schmoogle, and I can't say it because I, I have my phone and stuff so here. Anyways, it triggered it there, and then I told it to stop, and it stopped the. Um, it listens for yeah okay Shmugle. so one of the thing interesting things about uh the blah blah google is it does listen for that combo but we found out that um it's it's not as accurate in its listening as you would think so we were playing around 
uh, one time and you could even do like, okay, boo boo. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> and, and it will actually re respond to you, which uh, it reminds me, I, like, I, I wish, I wish they would uh, allow you to set whatever like pet name you had for your device. Yeah. Like robot girlfriend. You could totally just say that. Robot girlfriend. Robot yeah. girlfriend. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to access live chat so I can control things, but I don't know what I'm doing. Thank you guys so much for being part of this uh, first test. Uh, Allegra. Oh, Allegra. Allegra would work. Yeah. 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 We'll come up with some code names so that we all know yeah. what we're talking about, but. Yeah. See, I, I gotta figure this out. How do I? So I yeah. Thank you guys for um, checking this out. I think we'll give this a try. Uh, hopefully on Saturday, um, if not Sunday, we're going to try to drive somewhere as long as the roads are good, which, um, it's Denver. So like, uh, we got, uh, 27 inches of snow, but by Thursday, it'll probably be all gone. So <laughs> yeah, hopefully, um, cause we got that test drive on Friday. If you have any questions about the pole star two or any two. comparisons, um, I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I out of block. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah if you have any questions about polestar 2 let us know before friday yeah um i don't think it's going to suit us and my reservations about polestar 2 and why you know when i was looking at the maki even though it's like i had my order in and knew i was going to get it i also was like it's you know close to sixty thousand dollars want to make sure it's the right choice um but polestar 2 got eliminated for me because it was uh, before i was trying to schedule a test drive and they basically, it was like, okay, where do you want to go? Uh, LA, San Francisco, or New York? And I'm like, yeah, that, none of those are going to happen. So if I can't even test drive it, it's eliminated. Although the Volvo dealership thingies might help. Yeah. And, and, and on the, the Polestar 2 website, it says you can't take it to a Volvo dealer. You have to go to a Polestar service center. And they have like six open. And so it was like, it just got eliminated. Um, hundred percent for that reason before I even dug into the, the other details, but I've, I've heard that now like they're, they're going to open up little stores and like now they're bringing test drives to places like Denver and they're going to have you oh. be able to service it at Volvo. But, um, uh, okay. That's good to know. Yeah. Cause I heard Volvo is not servicing the Polestar twos. And then somebody, uh, actually it was the fast lane cars. Um, and for future reference, it's Jonathan's mentioned that uh, they're only servicing them in Europe. Yeah, the Volvo centers. So they're um, that's that's what I heard as well. It's like they're not servicing them here in the U.S. And Volvo um, is very adamant about that. But the fast lane cars said something different. So I was going to check it out. But that, yeah, yeah, I've heard that same thing. Is like they're not going to service them here. And um, we haven't done Ford and Allegra slash Alexa <laughs> to work yet. But we're, we'll um, we'll do. You know, as Liv was saying, we'll do all all three of the big assistant players: Google Assistant, <laughs> Siri, and our uh, Beery. I'll call her Beery. Beery, okay. We, so. we do a test day and see what it activates. the The thing that you did was that, like, whatever video we had, it was like Schmoke Schmugel stopped costing, so then the video just stopped, and we we're both like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it was very disappointing. So um I think well, this was fun. Yeah, this was yeah, fun. We we're, we're so actually much. on a lunch break, so yeah. <laughs> I I can't let go this back. go for too long because then my boss will know that I took longer than my yeah, they have alloc proof. allocated time. <laughs> and it was like we, yeah, be yeah, never mind. Long story <laughs> short, I can't do that. So um thank you for joining us. Uh this I think was a successful test. The lighting I know was horrible, but you know, we're in our garage. By the way, we added this light. Uh, to our garage. I don't know. It doesn't look super bright, but it is actually super bright. Um, you should have had a warning, brightness warning. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> um, it, it actually helps a lot, but like sitting here in the garage. Oh, here you go. It's... Watch this. We can, we have a glass roof. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I love the glass roof. That is cool. I feel like it's super Oops. underwhelming, but it actually is a really nice light. <laughs> if you want to see in your garage and they're very cheap, right? Yep. Yeah. Very cheap. Yeah. Uh, like 15, $16. So on Amazon. So thank you guys for joining. Yeah. Um, we'll see you soon. We have, um, probably another video coming out in a couple of days. I'm not sure which one that's going to um, be. Yeah. We might do the matte screen protector thing. I'm hoping that these bubbles sort themselves out. Uh, like I said to anyone, I think some people were ordering these two. It's one drop of soap to eight ounces of water. <laughs> 
don't go overboard with the soap, uh, but it looks like it's a really nice product. So I'd say that's probably my main tip with that. And then we have a, um, a Denver video coming out uh, probably next weekend, and then we'll get more footage next weekend. That's Drive right it around. Point. Yeah, if you have any requests, any questions, feel free to leave them. We are totally down for lots of fun in this car, except apparently not in the snow. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't be like that. <laughs> All right. Take care. Yeah. Bye. Thanks Bye -bye. for coming.